in public schools, teachers are not fixated on ec the economic success of their students. I can assure you that's the last thing on our mind. Even our fraudsters, as we know from Francis Ween, are unsuccessful. It's, uh, you know, our vocation is to enhance people's lives. Fully and fair. the purpose of learning languages is to double your vocabulary, to uh, enrich your experience, and to get to know other cultures. Absolutely. The economic advantages are a side effect which are of very little real moral I importance. Know, I, know. Uh, I, I adore Felipe's kind of assumption of the, if you like, the kind of cultural width of this particular argument. But almost everybody here understands that it is bogus. Suppose for a moment that all that cultural width were given at these schools and yet suddenly Barnaby Lennon and everybody else decided that they wouldn't take any exams and they wouldn't submit any of their students to going to, univers to top universities or top professions. Do you think for five seconds that all the parents here and elsewhere would let their kids go to those schools? Of okay. course not. Of course, of course the teachers are vocational but everybody secretly, not just so secretly but overtly, actually knows what is going on here. It's about advantage. Okay, over there, if we'll take two. Yes. Could you stand up, please? Yeah, sorry. Um, I was amused by Francis Ween's uh, depiction of his life at Harrow, uh, full of aristocratic drug dealers and fraudsters, but I'm confused by the proposition's arguments because they then also say that the public schools have the brightest and the best, and I think it is a, an, a, an oversimplistic attack to assume that everyone at Harrow is aristocratic yes. drug dealers and fraudsters. I would be interested if the opposition said that all the people at state school were vicious criminals. I'm sure it's a tiny percentage. It's politically, you know, the political correctness. We'd be astonished if the opposition said how appalling some of the people at state school were. Thank you. Yes. Next one. Thanks. This is a question uh, for the opposition. Uh, let's assume that uh, public schools are a good thing, uh, that they uh, enhance uh, their pupils' lives in, in the mind. Let's assume that they, they nourish them really well. My question, therefore, is how can it be not a blight on society that that enhancement and that nourishment is not open to all? Okay, thank you. Right, there's a question there. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name's Tim McCarthy. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know if, if you could hear me. Uh, now you can hear me. Um, a bit like Felipe, I'm a foreigner. Uh, and I came to this country when I was 11. And it was very backward. Um, my parents didn't really know much about the educational system here, and they sent me immediately to the local school. I was there about a year and a half. It was a state school. And basically, the teachers, when my parents met them, said that the best that I could hope for was probably some sort of trade, some sort of skill, but not an educational future. Um, my parents actually then did a bit of research had the means to pull me out of the state system, sent me then to an independent private school where a few years later I thrived, did very well in my O-levels, A-levels, scholarship to Cambridge. And I think what I want to say is that I think that one of the best things about this country is the private independent educational system, and that is recognized throughout the world, and it's for a reason, and that's because of the high standards that these schools represent, and they're a great um, advertisement for the country. Thank you. Okay, question up from there, and we'll take one up from there afterwards. Sorry. Um, I'm from New Zealand, so I appreciate my um, experience may be a little different. I spent the first seven years in the state school, and then five years in private school, and in my last year, um, I was very academic and very geeky, and I suspect I wouldn't fill the public school ethos either. And what my private education, my independent education gave me was um, an opportunity to um, use my academic skill. And that wasn't something that was encouraged in the state system in New Zealand. And I get the impression from some of the comments tonight that that's the same here. And my life was actually blighted by my state school education, not my private school education. Um, like the other point I'd like to make is that um, as a foreigner, I think of public schools as traditionally boys' schools, and coming after five years of um, single-sex education to you know, co-ed education at university, what I found is that boys of comfortable backgrounds, whether they're state-educated or privately-educated, are very cocky. 
and um, what girls need and that they don't have, particularly often in state schools, um, is that confidence. Okay, that's probably that a debate for another day, but thank you very much indeed. Uh, my name is Alfred Baker. I'd like to bring you up back to teachers. What we know is that 14% of teachers are teaching 7% of our students in private schools. Whatever is tempting them away, they are being tempted away. The most important resource in our schools is being removed from state schools by the private schools, lighting the education of those who represent our students. Now, Philippe Philippe managed to mock the proposition very convincingly, but he did not manage to argue convincingly, and neither did any of the opposition, that private schools do not endanger social mobility and equality opportunities. And to my mind, anything that endangers equality and social mobility is a blight on British society. Thank you very much indeed. Well, I'm going to ask the panel now to incorporate their responses to those points into their closing remarks. And as luck would have it, um, since we have the closing remarks in reverse order, we will start with Felipe. Okay, look, it's true public schools teach the rich. Well, thank God somebody does, because it's bad enough that the rich are rich. God forbid that they should also be stupid or you know, ignorant or mired in, in uh, lack of moral instruction. The, fault entirely. The one thing I forgot to say before the closing remarks is you have to vote. <laughs> so, well, just hold fire just for one moment. So, they will be coming around. As the microphones go away, the um, ballot boxes will be coming around and you vote for the proposition, obviously, with the part that says for. You vote against with the bit that says against. And if you don't know, then you put the slip in in its entirety. So apologies, Felipe, please resume. They do promote equality. Again, you know, I cite the example of ample forth or downside or worth Abbey schools I know very well. If you go there and you are taught a, an education so subversive of capitalism that you, know, you couldn't have anything more subversive of capitalism if Marx were the headmaster and Engels were the chaplain. We know that public schools reflect the inequalities of society, but so do all schools. That's in the nature of schools that they should reflect the vices of the societies in which they're embedded. Comprehensive schools do the same in a more intractable way because they create ghettos. They create uh, um, postcode ghettos. And a great example of that is the very good school that David went to and that the gentleman in the gallery went to, William Ellis School, which used to be a, an independent school, became a grammar school when its status was abolished by the government. It very nobly became a voluntary aided school. But it's in Hampstead. It's in Parliament Hill Fields. It's surrounded by the bourgeoisie. And the average income of parents at David's old school and that gentleman's old school is actually higher than that of many independent schools, including Kirkham School and Wolverhampton Grammar School and various others that I could, uh, I could mention. You're not going to fill it inequalities out of society by being beastly to the public schools. You're just going to transfer those inequalities elsewhere, and you're going to deprive the country of one of the great causeways and motors of social change that it has, which is that, that great life-enhancing, morally focused and centered education that many independent schools deliver, along with many of the, the, the other best schools in the country. Thank That's why the real radicals, the real revolutionaries in this room this evening are going to be with me and with us on this side of the house. Thank you.